Hello students. Well, this is the last video on the Pythagorean theorem. So what we're going to do is show you now how to generate new Pythagorean triads. So it turns out there's some really interesting mathematical formulas that can be used to, uh, to generate these. And once you know a little bit more algebra, which you'll learn later in grade 9 or in grade 10, you can actually prove that these formulas actually work. So if you're trying to figure out, for example, how do you, you know, you know that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triad and 8, 15, 17 is one. And you say, well, how do I find some others with bigger numbers? Well, these formulas um, is one way that you can do it. So have a look at these three expressions just up here. M, M squared minus 1 all over 2 and M squared plus 1 all over 2. Now, M is going to be... Uh, just we're going to that's going to be the smallest number a and m has to be a um, positive odd number so three bigger than one so three five seven nine eleven and so on and it turns out if you choose m to be any of these numbers or any positive odd number you'll generate a pythagorean triad so let's just double check that so when m is equal to three we get three there 3 squared minus, sorry, 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so that gives us the value of 4 for the second number, and 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that gives us the Pythagorean triad 3, 4, 5. If m is equal to 5, so we have 5 as our smallest number, 5 squared is 25, minus 1 is 24, divide 2 gives us 12, and 5 squared is 25, plus 1 is 26, divide 2 gives us 13. So I'll just do one more, and then leave it up to you to complete the table. So let's do a 7. So the smallest number is 7. 7 squared is 49. 49 minus 1 is 48, and 48 divide 2 is 24. And for the third number, we go, um, oh, I put that in the wrong place. That might be a bit better. And 7 squared is 49 plus 1 is 50. 50 divide 2 is 25. So 7, 24, 25 is also a Pythagorean triad, and so on. So basically, you can choose any odd um, natural number for m, and these three expressions will generate a Pythagorean triad. Now, it turns out that that particular formula doesn't generate all the Pythagorean triads. So if you want to get all the Pythagorean triads, you have to use some slightly more complicated formulas. So in this case, we've got three numbers that we have to choose. So we have M, N, and K. Now, M has to be bigger than N. So if M is 2, N is 1, and then K has to be 2 or larger. Uh, so for example, if M is 3, N can be 1 or 2, and then K can be any number. So let's go ahead and just generate um, one Pythagorean triad. I might just choose at random, I'll choose this row just here just to show you how it works. So what I need to do is have m squared, so that's 3 squared minus n squared. So 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, and for b, we've got 2kmn, so 2 times k is 2, sorry, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, and finally, m squared plus n squared, well, 9 plus 4 is 13, 13 times 2 is 26. So 10, 24, 26. So in fact, we don't actually need that third column because that generates the Pythagorean theorem. You could just use that third column to check that it actually works. So when you're doing this, maybe just 
leave that column out. And it turns out that you could use, again, M can be any um, natural number, probably two or bigger. N has to be smaller than M. Otherwise, if you subtract, you're going to get a negative number. And then K, I think, can be any value. And that will generate a Pythagorean triad. And with the right choice of M, N, and K, um, it will generate all the Pythagorean triads if you, if you use all the different possible combinations. Now, there's a lot more to learn about Pythagorean triads, which we don't have time to do um, in this unit. So what I suggest you do, if you have an interest in this, is just type in Pythagorean triad or Pythagorean triple into Google, and you'll find lots of information about these things. Okie doke. Well, that finishes off our unit on the Pythagorean theorem. So what you need to do now is go and open up your textbook and start working through some of the questions and the problems in the textbook. So good luck, and uh, we'll see you in the next video series.